session on database management system. Let me start by extending my prayers, my hope and commitment to the entire world to survive the pandemic COVID-19. Today in this session we are dealing with database security matters. We know for every business concern or for every organization data stored in a database is vital to the uh, business concern. So there should be some norms by which data can be made secured by controlling the access mechanisms. Database security is the mechanism that protect the database against intentional or accidental threats. There are numerous aspects to security problems that deals with one is the legal, social and ethical aspect. It says whether a person has legal right for the requested data. Yet another one is physical control that says whether the computer room is locked or it is pro properly guarded. Another one is policy questions that says how the enterprise decide who should be allowed and which kind of access should be allowed. Another one is operational problem that says whether a password is used to protect the data and how often the password change is allowed and how the password may, is made secure. Again, the hardware controls deals with the, uh, the storage protection keys and protection of protected operation mode for uh, the database ex, uh, premises. Again, the op operating system support, as we know, uh, there are various operating system security policies that can be used for database management system that says how the database management system itself can be protected by using these mechanisms. Now, the issues that are specific that are concerned to the database system itself, the DBMS provides certain in internal policy sec security policies that can be used for protecting the data. For database security issues, there are three main objectives to implement the policy. One is the secrecy or the confidentiality and second one is the integrity and third one is the availability. Secrecy or confidentiality that deals with protecting the database from unauthorized users. It ensures that information stored in the database is not disclosed to any unauthorized user. It ensures that users are allowed to do what they are trying to do. For example, if a student is not allowed to examine the other student's grade in the database, if an intentional uh, seek for a student grade is performed, that should be protected. Integrity, it says protecting the database from authorized user. Even if a user is an authorized one, some kind of accidental modification to the database may violate the consistency of the database. So, the security policy should ensure that what user is trying to do is correct to the database consistency. For example, suppose a valid user is a, stu uh, valid user is, is a student of the organization and it is allowed to examine his grade, but some protection should be made so that the student is not allowed to modify the grade. The third one is availability. It says an authorized user should not be denied for an access from the data, for the data. That is, the database must not have unplanned downtime. That is, the database should not be unavailable for a longer time. To ensure this, uh, we use the steps. First one is, restrict the amount of storage space given to each user in the database. And again, back up the database at periodic intervals to ensure that a recovery is possible in case of a loss or damage of the data. Again, we can limit the number of concurrent sessions that is uh, made on the database access. Again, we can rely on the operating system or underlying network security policies. But here in this session, we focus on uh, protecting the database by using access control mechanisms. There are two broad approaches to database security through the access control. One is discretionary access control and the second one is mandatory access control. Discretionary access control that deals with a certain kind of privileges that is assigned to the database objects. Here we are dealing with database objects that is basically the tables or views of the database. Some other kinds are also possible but here we deal with the tables and views. Again, the privileges assigned to the database object deal, uh, that says what access rights are given to these objects. 
it uses the mechanisms for giving or allowing the user such privileges. Typically, they are defined by authorities. The general syntax is, we can say an authority name. So, authority followed by an authority name, then the keyword grant, then a certain kind of privilege list that on that says which on which object uh, the privileges are set and to that says the user identification list to, to whom this privileges are now granted. For example, we can write authority SA3 grant retrieve on s hash s name city delete on s to g's mary and fred that says the authority name is given as sa3 it provides the retrieve privilege to the database objects s hash s name and city of a table and also it provides a privilege for delete on the relation name s and the privileges are assigned to the users G's, Mary and Fred. The discretionary access control, here the authorities have four components, a name, here we are dealing with SA3 that is authority name and privilege list, here we are dealing with retrieve, delete, etc. And the relver that de de deals with uh, the database objects for which uh, the privilege list are given. And one or more users can be granted the special specified privileges. Here in the example, we are giving G's, Mary and Fred. Yes, in the authority, uh, in the relver list that says for the relation name. The privileges can be retrieve, insert, delete, update, etc. If some user attempts some operation on some objects for which the user is not authorized, then the attempt is rejected. Again, it is possible to drop an authority uh, that is already given by, uh, given to a user. It is done using the syntax drop authority then authority name. For example, we can use drop authority SA3. That says all privileges assigned through the authority name SA3 is now dropped. SQL supports discretionary access control using uh, the grant and revoke commands. The grant command gives privileges to the user on tables and views. In SQL, the syntax for using grant is grant privileges on object to users. And then as, uh, as an optional part, we can use with grant option. We can see what it means. The object it can be either a table or a view. The privileges can be select, insert, delete or uh, references. You are very familiar with the operations select, insert and delete. Reference here means uh, we can assign a foreign key to a table or view by using this special privilege. For example, we can use grant select on EMP table to Harry. That says we are assigning the special privilege or select for the table EMP table to the particular user Harry. That says the user Harry is now has all privileges to view all the tuples in the relation EMP table. Yet another example is grant update on EMP sal to job comma down. That says we are assigning the special privilege update to the users specified that is job and down on the table EMP sal. That says the two users job and down now have all the privileges to update all the uh, all the way all the uh, components of EMP sal table. If a user has a privilege with grant option, that says if we are using the optional part with grant option, the the privileges assigned by the user can be passed to other users. That means we can cascade the privileges to other users also. In some time, we may want to revoke the privileges assigned to a user. This can be done by using the syntax revoke privilege on object from user. Here the privilege can be the privilege, any of the privilege list and object can be a table or a view. User can be the user list. For example, revoke update on EMP sal from job. The already assigned privilege of update operation to job on the table EMP sal is now revoked. So, 
the permissions are again revoked from the user job. Even if we can implement different security policy by using this discretionary access control, there are certain defects. That says a skillful and unauthorized user can trick an authorized user to disclose sensitive data. This is actually, this can be done, suppose uh, there is a particular uh, grade table and an unauthorized user say job, he wants to use or he wants to extract some information from that grade table. And from an authorized user, he may want to uh, get a permission or he may uh, access a permission to uh, select uh, all the tuples of the relation and by accessing the uh, certain code of the database management system, he can uh, provide or he can get a way to extract all the tuples in the relation of uh, grade uh, that is uh, the skillful unauthorized user can again hack the data from a protected database still by using by simply implementing the discretionary access control. The second one is the mandatory access control. Here you, it uses a system wide policy that cannot be changed by individual users. Here each database object is assigned a security class and each user is assigned a clearance for a security class. A given data object can be accessed only by users with appropriate clearance level. Here the mandatory access control tends to be hierarchical in nature and again it is very rigid. So it is applicable to databases with rigid classifications as in the case of some military or government environment. The clearance level for users, it forms a strict ordering for example, uh, the top secret, then the secret and the confidential. The following rules are then imposed. Given a user, user i, user i can retrieve an object j only if the clearance level for i is greater than or equal to the classification level of j. This is the simple security policy property that is uh, used by the mandatory access control. Another one is a star property that says a user i can update an object j only if the clearance level for i is equal or equal to the classification level for the object j. The mandatory access control levels, it, def it is defined in most cases using four security classes say D, C, B and A. Here class D is the least secure one and C is more secure and D is more secure than C and so on. Okay. Uh, class D is set to, set to provide minimal protection, class C the discretionary discretionary protection and class B the mandatory protection and class A the verified protection. Discretionary protection says uh, protection level C, it is again divided into two subclasses C1 and C2 where C1 is less secure than C2. Each subclasses also support the discretionary controls. The mandatory protection, the class B, it is again divided into B1, B2 and B3. The verified protection, the most secure class, class A, it requires that the security mechanism is consistent and it is adequate to support this policy. I hope the session was useful. Thank you.